Hey Canucks fans and welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Friday, December the 8th. We have now officially entered the era of no Bo Horvat. Safe to say I don't like this era already. Canucks lost 4-1 to the Flyers. Flyers on a three-game win streak now. After sweeping Western Canada, the Canucks had their three-game win streak ended by last night's loss. What are three reasons why the Canucks lost last night? Number one, the obvious one is Bo Horvat. His absence was greatly felt even strength, power play, penalty kill. When Horvat plays, he creates space and he creates opportunities for his line mates. Usually when Horvat's driving to the net or carrying the puck or using his speed to, to make something happen, that means guys like Besser, Godolbin, Berchi, whoever his line mates are, can get open and can get opportunities. That didn't happen last night. It was, it was obvious that that wasn't happening, so much so that Travis Green changed up all his lines in the third period in a desperate bid to find chemistry between anyone. And it only resulted in one goal, Brock Bester scoring in the third period. So I, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I have a feeling I'm going to be naming Horvat's absence as one of the three reasons um, if, as the, if the Canucks continue to lose or as the Canucks lose more games, it's obviously going to be, that's going to be one of the main factors. So the Canucks are going to have to figure out how to survive without Horvat. They made a trade to partly, very partly alleviate that. Um, and I'll get to that at the very end of this commentary. So no Horvat was number one. Number two reason, penalties and the resulting power plays or penalty kills for the Canucks. Canucks went on went shorthanded six times and the Flyers ended up scoring on two of those opportunities. And uh, kind of related to the first one, Bo Horvat is a primary penalty killer. Him and Louis Erickson were settling into a nice little, uh, nice little tandem there. So obviously with no Horvat, that means someone else has to play on the penalty kill and uh, Sam Gagne took, his, Gagne took his, his place for some shifts and it just so happened that the very first Flyers goal was a, a goal off of Sam Gagne's stick. He kind of lazily put his, his stick in the shooting lane and it deflected off his stick and passed Jacob Markstrom. So I'm not blaming Gagne completely. It's not Gagne's fault by the Canucks loss overall. But again, an, uh, an ode to the absence of Bo Horvat and the, the Canucks struggling penalty kill last night. Again, giving up two out of six chances two goals, two power play goals by the Flyers and one of them was a direct result of Gagne's tip on his own net unfortunately. So the penalty kill they're going to have to figure that out. They're going to have someone to have to step up to join. Of course when Sutter comes back next week that's going to help. He can slide back into where Horvat was playing and play with Erickson but until then they're going to have to find a fourth penalty killer to go along with Erickson, Gantz and Marcus Granlin. Third reason why the Canucks lost, the little things. The Canucks aren't talented enough to have a lot of little things not go well they have to do the little things well and in particular the first two goals the first one I just mentioned Sam Gagne maybe making an ill-advised attempt to block the shot of the Flyers defenseman so that was led to goal number one and on the second goal Louis Erickson who's generally pretty responsibly uh, um, pretty responsibly defensively even as a forward you know he's good at back checking he's good along the wall he's good at stick checking he's good at sticking with his man but uh, last night he lost his man at the Blue Canucks blue line and his man went straight to the net and did a cute little deflection. Well, cute. It was a deflection past Markstrom, who I, I think still should have had the puck, but, the, you know, it's no big deal. But it was because of Erickson's a lack of his back check. He let his guy escape him and get to the front of the net, and therefore leading to the Flyers' goal. And by then, the Flyers were off to the races, so to speak, with a 2 nothing lead. So three reasons why the Canucks lost. Among them, the absence of Bo Horvat, too many, power, uh, too many penalties, and um, not enough attention to the little things. Lastly, the Canucks made a trade. They announced it quite late, actually, between 10.30 and 11 o'clock last night, trading defenseman Jordan Subban to the LA Kings in, a, in exchange for center Nick Dowd. Nick Dowd has played 90 games in the NHL over the past uh, two seasons. Um, not really a, a, a point getter or whatever, but he's, he's a hard-checking forward. He'll fit in the bottom six, and he's decent in the face-off circle, so just waving because the guy just let me in. Um, so he's obviously not expected to fill the, the void left by Bo Horvat offensively, but if he can play defensively, uh, win some face-offs, and give the, give the Canucks more options, more depth at center, especially as they wait for Sutter to come back. You know, when, then when Sutter comes back, we'll see what happens. Then you have Sutter, Henrik, and some combination of Granling, Gantz, uh, Burmistrov playing, um, and Dowd, I guess, playing in the center positions throughout the lineup. All right, Canucks fans, what would you think of the game? I hope, I hope it's not the start of, of a losing slide or a losing streak, 
but we'll see. The Canucks are going to have to dig deep. Guys are going to have to step up, as Travis Green said, in the absence of Bo Horvat. Have a great day, have a great day Canucks fans. Enjoy this um, non-game day. And I won't be checking in on the weekend, as I usually only do these on, on, um, on weekdays. So I hope the Canucks do well in Calgary tomorrow night. And I'll be back on Monday with another commentary. Again, have a great day. And I invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. God bless and go Canucks go.